Hi everyone, I'm now talking to Blythe from Beyond Politics, the new direct action group. Um, Blythe, would you like to start by telling us how you first got involved in Beyond Politics and why? Um, yeah, so um, I was previously involved in Extinction Rebellion's Money Rebellion um, and um, uh, was very keen on all the Extinction Rebellion demands, um, especially the one for citizens' assemblies. I think that's um, it's really important that um, we uh, transfer power to people because obviously the government is doing a terrible job. We need some really radical changes ASAP and that's not going to happen under the current government and it's no. actually terrifying no. how their lack of action um, so that's why it's so important um, and uh, basically one of the activists um, came to me and I heard about Beyond Politics got involved via one of their meetings and then quite quickly was catapulted into it and now I'm doing the kind of organizational side of things with a couple of others. Great. So um, what does that organisational role entail exactly? Um, it's kind of keeping on top of the systems of integration, integrating new people. Mm. Um, I attend most of the meetings we do just to keep tabs on, on what everything's doing. I'm doing a lot of the media side of things, liaising with journalists. Oh, yeah. Uh, and... Um, uh, getting press releases ready because um, that's obviously a really important part of it, trying to get coverage for what we're doing because otherwise people won't know why things have happened um, and it's really important that they um, they understand that there is a reason behind it we're not just randomly mm. doing these non-violent actions. Great, great. There is quite a clear link to, because um, when, I, when I spoke to Ben the other day, really nice to meet him and do the interview with him, um, but I think I got slightly the wrong impression from him or, 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 well, no, maybe it was just his perspective was that Beyond Politics is uh, very different to Extinction Rebellion. But when I went on, when I went back to the Beyond Politics website, I realised that a lot of the language just sort of overlaps, which I think is a good thing. I think it's quite smart that that even though you're a different group, if you have some overlapping language with XR, then it's kind of um it's a good way of building a movement of movements. And I guess that's why I guess that's why that's been done. So I saw that on your website you've got instead of tell the truth as a demand to the government, it's we tell the truth. And then instead of act now demanding that the government act now, you've got we're acting now. I thought that was a really clever sort of turnaround and mm. uh, and then and then the um yeah beyond politics focus but i mean have you got anything to say about how much you are like xr and how much you're different to xr yeah there's quite a lot on that um it is really key that we are separate from xr yeah uh, we it just happens that a few of us are um old, are either x um, Extinction Rebellion activists or still doing Extinction Rebellion stuff I guess the activist community is not that huge either really in, in proportion to the rest of the population so people end up doing a lot of the same things but we've got we're collaborating with XR um, for something in September um, we're going to have a load of different groups like XR and um, the, uh, some anti-austerity groups like there's an event called resist resistance it used to be called resist the illegal boris johnson administration um and a group called a northern group called the the people's futures oh, yeah. um and a few other groups so we're collaborating um uh, but we are uh, it's interesting you spoke about the language on the website actually because i think xr would also disagree with you that we're really different from in terms of language as well because obviously there's quite a lot of quite um um how, what should, how, what should i say like oh yeah like expletives on the yeah, yeah. on the website so um it's 
it's I mean XR would definitely not do that and they are quite against that so that's really important we, we're using this language um, on purpose yeah um, to distinguish ourselves because it, it like appeals to different kinds of people um, I think like swearing is the language of quite angry people and you know people who are affected by the system we're living under right now are more likely to be angry and and to use that language and also like everyone uses that language often so many people use swear words i think um it's quite important that um we see like swear words as there's been accusations for example that we we're kind of using quite macho language mm. and actually like my mum swears my grandma swore like I swear like we're all women and it's actually the language of people who are frustrated <laughs> um uh so we've been people have been joining because they like that language and because they like the fact that the other difference is we're acting now like you said and we're doing a lot of actions um and not kind of sitting around waiting um and the people who are in, involved are people who really want to do stuff yeah. um Extinction Rebellion has been really good at that in the past, especially the first um, rebellion. Um, so we're trying to kind of capture that spirit, I suppose, yeah. Um, yeah. and do something from scratch that is really, um, really like really pushing the system again. Yeah. Um, starting from scratch is hard, obviously. So, and we've got people who aren't involved with Extinction Rebellion who are interested in, are interested in doing this instead. So we're attracting different people as well. Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And sorry, I wasn't clear enough. I didn't mean that the finer points of the language um, on the website were, were similar to Extinction Rebellion. What I meant was there was an overlap in some of the phrases like act now, t tell the truth. Um, and I think it's good that you've got that overlap of just those phrases. So it's, it's like a nice orientation point. And then people go into it and then they see, oh, it's very different to Extinction Rebellion. So it's kind of, I think it's good that you just have that little thing in common. And it, it's kind of, you know, you've obviously done that deliberately or whoever thought of doing that. But, um, and yeah, I really appreciate uh, what you said about swearing and stuff because even though I try not to swear too much, I do swear like when I get frustrated. So yeah, that's really great that you, that you're like, and my partner's very big on that. She's, she's been quite critical of how XR have been a bit too nice uh, at points. So I think she's really, she's really up for this uh, expressing yourself and using expletives if you need to and stuff. So yeah, that's really cool. And And I know, I've seen a few of your actions on, I think it's real media, um, and they look like quite humorous, but, but good as well. Like one of them was um, tying up the barriers at a train station so that people could get free journeys. <laughs> yeah, on the people train. watching that were really laughing as well. Yeah, it's great. Did, did, did people, did members of the public actually then walk through the open barriers? Yeah, we got a few people walking through. It wasn't a really big station. It was a train station, by the way, um, not a tube station, just oh. so people are aware. Okay. Um, uh, because we were trying to do a, a, a station where people would be able to go through and they'd get out the other side, if you see what yeah. I mean. They wouldn't have to tap out um, right, right. with the trains. And um, and and it's, and it's the trains are privatised as well, so we're doing it. Uh, private train service rather than the public tube service yeah but yeah it was really funny the actions are hilarious mm. can you explain a bit more to the viewers what the sort of political reason behind that train action was like what the you know the, the sort of the sort of thinking what what was the point that was being made yeah all of them are about um basic human needs yeah. um so there was a food action at the beginning stealing food to give to poor people on the streets i'd love to um, try that where, who, where did you steal it from please do try it we stole it from sainsbury's and it was really um <laughs> they didn't seem to mind which is very telling because um we did nothing happened of that the security guards kind of 
spoke to us about it um and police didn't turn up really it's just like this, this they can afford to lose hundreds of pounds worth of food oh, wow. um, yeah is it because do you think it's partly because you were filming it and they didn't want to be embarrassed or something um yeah maybe um i'm surprised it, they didn't call the police yeah it was it was really i mean ridiculous because um because we we literally were wheeling out huge shopping shopping trolleys loads of food really oh my god um, yeah well, i didn't watch that one yet i'll have to go and watch that amazing um and so there was that one there was the food one the transport one and the foxton's estate agent one which was about housing um hmm. okay yeah so they're all about basic human needs and things that we should all have but which we don't all have um and it's highlighting issues which the government are not tackling sufficiently um and just saying these are problems we don't have a solution that we want to propose to these problems except creating citizens assemblies so that people can discuss these such issues such as these and come to a solution themselves that are in the interest of people because ordinary people are making the decisions um uh so yeah and then the upside of it is these actions are really fun to do <laughs> and if you want to do it uh, matthew i really recommend it <laughs> right, yeah um, so I, so I, so let's say me and my partner decided to go and steal some food and, and then give it to homeless people or whatever. It, it, if we just used the Beyond Politics logos and stuff, and if we use the colour pink, is that are those are like the parameters or something? Is it like is that? And and if we're in and if we're in line with the aim of creating citizens assemblies. Um, is there anything else that you have to do? Like, if somebody's watching this and they want to do an action in the name of, in the name of Beyond Politics, like, what what guidelines are they supposed to abide by? Um, they have. We have two rules. One is um, stay non-violent. Yeah. And the other is do whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um, we also are like totally unprotective of our branding so if the pink is is really prominent so it's worth using the color pink it's shocking pink yeah. specifically i do like that color as it, hap as it happens yeah, yeah that's that that color's got a whole lot of history as well and there's some really interesting things about the reason we cho we chose pink mm. um i mean we chose it because it's not a color that the other political parties use mm. um and it's also um quite a bright color mm. and um and also has a history of in politics and like in italy it's associated with anti-fascism right um and like in the under um under kind of the dictatorship they um there was a, a woman who at that time like adopted that color and it was like completely outrageous because mm. everyone was wearing darker colors and it was just such a color that you didn't see around that time okay. um and she got a huge backlash for it um so yeah that that's that's why we have that color um mm. but if people want to do the actions they they can you can they can use that color if they want but they can also make their own flyers um they can um they can do their own design their own logo if they want do whatever they want really um it's like the um there was an election in in madrid um like 2015 or something somewhere around there where people um where there was a, a new political party that started and people were um they started completely from scratch and people were phoning in like how can um we help we want to put up posters and stuff have you got any flyers to distribute and they were just like make your own yeah. do it yourself yeah. and so that's the attitude we want to have okay like, i've got a question for you this is a bit of a silly question do you think it's possible to non-violently rob a bank <laughs> that's really funny because actually we considered doing that really oh wow <laughs> yeah um, but we don't. We didn't really have the time to do. We had quite a few action ideas, which we haven't had the time to um, 
actually act on. Um, but um, yeah, so the, our idea for the action, which I'm happy to share with everyone, was we would um, do a kind of protest march. I mean, it's really difficult, to, obviously, and impos almost impossible to rob a bank nowadays. Yeah. But um, yeah. we were going to do a protest march with a big banner saying bank robbery, walk through the streets <laughs> to the bank, um, which we would have accidentally let slip to in our, in our messaging or whatever yeah. beforehand. So we'd arrive there with people with the police waiting for us and we'd say, um, oh hi, we're here to rob bank. <laughs> we rob the bank and they'd be like, no, obviously. And then we'd be like, oh, we'll come back tomorrow then. <laughs> and in the meantime, we were thinking of um, like handing out some kind of fake money in the streets. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, it, uh, I mean, I think people do occasionally rob banks, but they do it very violently. So uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, yeah. It's a, sh I'm, uh, it's a shame that there must be, I'm sure if a lot of us got our heads together, there could be um, maybe not exactly robbing the bank, but um, something close to it. But what you but what you just said sounds amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I think that there's definitely a need for more humour in um, in activism, but like hard hitting humour, um, uh, because you know Extinction Rebellion has been really good at getting in touch with the grief and the rage. And yes, we have to feel the grief and the rage. But if we can have, if we can, if we can have people like rolling on the ground laughing, then, then that's 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 good as well. I think. Um, yeah, so, you have to have some humour in it, don't you? Because actually, yeah. otherwise, it's too depressing and terrifying to almost cope with mm. the um, climate crisis and things like that. Yeah. So you've done basic needs. So you've done housing food, transport, um, what about shelter? Have you thought about squatting or doing some kind of squatting action? I suppose that takes more resources because you have to sort of stay there for a bit and stuff. Um, so so mm. what have you got, what other, what other things have, have you, are in the pipeline or can't you say? Um, I'm just gonna have a little think. Um about whether we've got two ac a couple of actions coming up definitely one coming up this yeah. week and um one either this week or next week um and i can tell you the the theme is the environment for this one yeah in a way and um the the how future generations and are going to have to live on a parental and really dire circumstances if we don't act really soon um and yeah i can't tell you i don't think what we're going to do no, <laughs> unfortunately no, no, no. oh well maybe i can interview you afterwards one of, one of you but yeah yeah definitely yeah so I've, I've just got a couple more questions for, for myself and anyone watching this so you said the two principles were non-violence and do what the fuck you want. But what about, just want to check, because Ben indicated that non-violence, the definition, which is a common definition, is non-violence against living beings. So does that mean, what I mean, does that mean a small amount of criminal damage is acceptable if, it, if there's a really good point behind it? And um, is that, in that sense, would you be a bit more radical than Extinction Rebellion, maybe? Because I know there has been a couple of Extinction Rebellion actions where windows were smashed, deliberate, and, and that was quite uh, tactical. But I mean, where do you stand on things like breaking windows? Yeah, we are. Um, property damage is definitely acceptable for us. So, um, yeah, the Foxton's uh, action, we graffitied all over the windows. Um, and um, was it chalk paint though? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. It was graffiti paint. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, we're saying that's fine. Okay, great, great. Um, 
yeah, that's nice. It's like a, a just a little bit more edgy than than Extinction Rebellion. Um, so, and we're doing it because I suppose, um, like, we need to cause disruption, and it's been like over a year since the government declared a climate emergency, and they haven't done anything about it. So we clearly need to amp up the action and be more radical. Nice. Um, and there's, um, so the idea is that you've got like people who are part of Extinction Rebellion now who are like very middle class and they're actually quite hesitant about doing things in a way. Um, and they wouldn't be, they, like, they wouldn't, the kind of property damage thing we're doing, it's, it maybe wouldn't be accepted it would take a long time at least to get through the various extinction rebellion circles um and so you've got these people who are in this space and that is the kind of they these are considered the radical climate movement at the moment and then you've got the majority of people who are even like before that who aren't doing anything and who are just continuing business as usual and then uh, the idea is we're creating a more radical group here so that we kind of drag people over like just as extinction Re people a rebellion like acquired people who had never done activism before which is yeah. really interesting yeah. we're trying to like um open the overton window onto like um the, it's 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 really necessary to bring down the government which sounds like a crazy idea to people because um, but look at what the government's doing right now. They're literally complicit in the destruction of humanity. They're continuing with an economic system that is with, uh, based on economic growth, which is going to destroy us. Um, there's like loads of experts saying it. They're, they're defying their, their scientists' advice. With COVID, we've seen how there was like um, tens of thousands of more deaths ne than necessary. We had like one of the de high highest death tolls in Europe or even in the world maybe and um and based on their really faulty kind of herd immunity idea which they they offered to start off with and we've seen like mer like crazy austerity which even the imf said is a bad idea we've seen like suicide suicide rates going up the roof for disabled people because they're having their benefits cut this government are literally murdering people and it is therefore in our duty to bring them down because they've broken the social contract with us no. they're like harm to their hazard for people they're no longer protecting people which is their duty so that's why we're doing what we're doing um and um uh yeah so so we're kind of like trying to get people to think that this is something that's possible that the people are that gr this group of people are crazy enough to think that they can bring down the government and therefore we're trying to attract more people to that idea and normalize it as a as a concept yeah sounds sounds good um and on some days i might say oh yeah i totally agree with you but um right now i've got a, a bit of a question about it and that is um have you thought anything about the transit what the transition would look like to between sort of bringing down the government as you put it and in, and installing citizens assemblies don't you think it's really important that in that transition vulnerable people aren't even worse off than they are now i'm not saying that the government aren't treating people badly they are i'm not saying the government aren't killing people they are but don't we have to be careful that in any transition to potential citizens assemblies that vulnerable people are protected because if you imagine how chaotic it would be if the government are sort of disempowered totally we've got to be really careful haven't we that in the in the vacuum that might momentarily open up we've got to be careful that we protect the most vulnerable people mm. Well, there's a few things. Yeah, you're, you're right, actually. That's a really good um, point. Um, there's a few things, though. First is the urgency of the situation and that the government is... We, we can't... We have to bring down the government because they're not going to do anything on them by themselves. Um, and kind of petitioning and campaigning, peace, like 
quietly towards them is not going to do anything for a very long time so there's the urgency of the situation and then there's also that there are a lot of experts who have worked on citizens assemblies um and so it's not like we're introducing an entirely new um kind of organizational system that's not been tried and tested um so um we've got there was citizens assemblies in ireland to um bring about the, to legalize abortion um, and which is the example that everyone gives um, and the citizens assemblies that have been used elsewhere. Um, so I think it wouldn't be as, as, as difficult as you are worried it might be because the, the knowledge about creating citizens assemblies is very well established. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm not, it's not that part that worries me. I, I, I understand that citizens' assemblies work. They work really well and they can be created. What I'm worried about is the transition between the old government and the new. So how, like literally, like in practical terms, how does the day-to-day -day change over of power or replacement of power? Because like you're not going to sort of suddenly in one day, suddenly there's going to be a citizens' assembly sitting in parliament. It's It's like... But I guess you would just negotiate with the government a handover period, wouldn't you? Like a, mm. yeah, like a handover period. And like in my view, uh, what Extinction Rebellion has totally failed to do, which maybe you might be able to do, is make connections with the military. And even though it's hard to do, and obviously, traditionally, people see the military as more right wing, military people as more right wing, you know, they're, they're not all... They're not all that bad, and I think some of them, some of them, we, at least we need to win over. And uh, yeah, because the transition to citizens' assembly, if it was, if it was, well, it has to be with the support of key people in the military, doesn't it? I think. <laughs> I assume so. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. actually. Yeah. Going into um, territory, I'm, I'm a bit um, unclear on myself. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, because like, I don't know if you've read any Gene Sharp, who's like one of the supposed to be one of the sort of main. Um, don't like to say the word authority, but one of the most experienced. He he is a very experienced. I don't think he's alive now, but he was very ex experienced in uh, tactics and strategy with civil disobedience. And one of the key things he'd said, and also Erica Chenoweth and. Stefan in um, how civil resistance works that Roger Hallam's quoted from a lot um, that's supposed to be the basis of a lot of XR theory of change is that we have to win over at least sections of the police and the military in order for a social movement to be successful um, but uh, I don't know maybe you could do some or someone maybe I could do it some kind of comedy action in, in an army barracks like some kind of comedy action to because I did trespass, me and my girlfriend trespassed on an army barracks to do an Extinction Rebellion thing once. We were just shouting out, but the army weren't home. We chose the wrong time. It was, it was almost empty. Oh, right. <laughs> but um, um, like, yeah, um, although they're not the sort of people I would normally associate with, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but I wouldn't, um, that could be interesting, I think, to right on the extreme edges of what's possible to try and to try and make make soldiers laugh and get them over to your point of view you know mm. but, um, sorry i went off on a ramble no yeah no it's okay yeah. um um yeah it's quite a kind of hairy one isn't it because mm. you don't want to um i mean um Personally, as well, I like feel like we're we in a lot of these actions. We're obviously like exercising our privilege, um, getting arrested because for like others it would be a completely diff. Other people, it would be a completely different scenario getting arrested. Um, and um, although we always have someone there to like convince people to try and get them on side because they are obviously individuals as well as being part of an institution and um and a lot of them like a lot of police officers did they did 
joined a lot of them just joined the police force because they thought they would be helping their communities yeah um, yeah i'm glad you said that that's really nice yeah that's true um can i just ask um so you've got the we, we can wrap up in a minute because so i like to keep these nice and short but um like yeah, it's really lovely to meet you and everything. And, and I, I love the two principles, non-violence and do what the fuck you want. Um, could you just, I wonder, expand a little bit on, do, do you take any sort of regen culture, as they call it, principles from XR? Like, do you take any of that stuff on board in Beyond Politics? Or um, have, have you got your own version of that? Or is that not important uh, to, to Beyond Politics? Um, we haven't really got regen culture as such. Um, we've got, um, we all look after each other though. Yeah. Um, just maybe just naturally. Yeah. So like after getting arrested, I was met by a load of people with cake and, and tea and stuff and hugs. Yeah. Uh, and, and, um, uh, I think there's just a caring kind of, we're all doing something quite extreme, so we've got to look after each other. It's kind of feeling. Mm. Um, and are you? A, I can't remember. Are you an arrestable person? Yes. Yeah, I am. Okay. Did you? Did you? Did you get arrested with Extinction Rebellion or any other group before? Um, no. So that was my first arrest for the um, the Foxtons action. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well done. Does it? Did it feel okay? Was it traumatic or? Um, no, I think I really needed to get out of my system and just um, and get one done because yeah. otherwise I would be. I was quite like I found it quite. I found it fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Um, and are, are you prepared to potentially go to prison for like a few weeks or something if you have to? Yeah, potentially. Okay. I'm not sure how much we can say about that either. Okay. Okay. On these. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ben, I mean, Ben said, Ben said, oh yeah, I'll go to prison for a few months if I have to. But yeah, it's all about whether, I guess, I mean, you could get a knock on the door and I could get a knock on the door now, I guess, if I put this on YouTube. But oh well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's too late for a few things. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Oh, well, I'm sorry if I rambled a bit too much all about the military and stuff. That was just... No, that was interesting. Okay, okay. It was really nice to have it as a discussion, like, rather than just question, question. Yeah, you know. yeah well, I thought with Beyond Politics, as you're a radical group, I thought we might just do it in a more sort of rough kind of, yeah, just a, like a more like a casual conversation. So, yeah. Uh, yeah cool i'm excited to see it thanks okay thanks well, for your time. that's all right yeah so have a good day and um good luck with all the zoom calls and stuff